Hello, everyone. My name is Angela Fobbs. I'm the Communications Director for Democrats Abroad, and I'll be your moderator today for today's press conference. We'll take questions at the end of the presentation given by our chair, our international chair, Martha McDevitt Pugh. Uh, Martha, if you'd like to go ahead. Uh, thank you so much, Angela, and welcome everyone to this exciting moment. The uh, the release of our uh, of our results from our global presidential primary. I'm really glad to be here with you today. Um, I'm a California voter who votes from the Netherlands, and I've been voting with Democrats abroad in their global primary since the very first one in 2008. And I'm really proud to have been international chair for this particular edition of the global uh, presidential primary, which has been really amazing. You know, it is such a big and complex event, which takes place worldwide. And I'm just so grateful for all our volunteers who greeted and supported Americans in casting their votes. It was really so moving to see families voting together, parents bringing their children, all to experience this unique moment of voting together in person. So really glad to be here today. And um, Angela, if you'd start the slides, that would be great. So a little bit about Democrats Abroad, that we are the official Democratic Party for the 9 million US citizens outside the United States. And we're here to mobilize the vote of Americans abroad to elect Democrats, but also to advocate for issues that really matter to Americans abroad. And Democrats Abroad sends 21 delegates to the Democratic National Convention in August 2024, uh, 13 of which are the pledge delegates. Next slide. Um, so our global presidential primary was held from March 5th, Super Tuesday, through March 12th this year. And we voted at voting centers all around the world in 44 different countries and 90, 95 different in-person voting centers. And we also had the opportunity to vote remotely by email, fax, and postal mail. And we had voters this, uh, this year from 109 different countries. At the global presidential primary, Americans can cast their votes for the Democratic presidential candidate of their choice. And Democrats abroad this year had two candidates who qualified for the ballot. Candidates must earn 15% of the primary vote in order to be allocated delegates. And the 13 delegates um, that, that we elect are always allocated proportionally based on the percentage of the vote. And of course, only those valid, those voters, that, those uh, candidates that are above the 15% threshold. Um, a couple of other things about our global presidential primary this year. Um, we had 44 countries and we had three countries that were new. They were holding their first voting center ever. And that was Kenya, South Africa, and Guyana. Uh, next slide, Angela. So the results of our global presidential primary, again, there were two candidates on the ballot. People also had the option to vote uncommitted. And the results are that we have allocated, we will be giving our 13 delegates to Joseph R. Biden, who got 80.14% of the vote. Um, Marianne Williamson was also on the ballot, but did not reach the threshold with 6.68%. She was below the 15%. And we also had 13.8% of our voters voting uncommitted. Again, that was below the 15% threshold. So the delegates, 13 delegates will all go to Joseph R. Biden. And the number of votes that we had this year are also indicated 6,910 for Joseph Biden, 576 for Marianne Williamson, 1,136 uncommitted votes, and a total of 8,622. So just in comparison, in 2012, which was the last time that we had an incumbent president um, on the ballot, um, we've had three times more votes this year than we did in 2012, uh, when we had 2,700 votes. So those are our results. Angela, if you go to the next slide. Um, just so a little bit about our delegation to the convention in Chicago. Democrats Abroad does have eight automatic delegates. So those are our DNC members, our international chair, myself, our vice chair, Steve Nardi, who's also here on the call, our automatic delegates, plus um, our other six elected uh, Democrats Abroad DNC members are all automatic delegates. Uh, we have then the 13 um, elected delegates who are going to choose at our upcoming conventions. One of those is a PLEO delegate, so that is somebody who's a party leader um, in, in Democrats Abroad, and that PLEO delegate will be elected at our global convention, which will take place in Costa Rica on the 31st of May. 
Um, we also have 12 at-large delegates that will be elected during the DA regional and global conventions in 2024. So we're going to be having three regional conventions for our Asia Pacific region, which will be an online convention. We'll also have a convention for Europe, the Middle East and Africa, which will also be an online convention. And then the Americas region will also have their own regional convention, which will be a hybrid in person in Costa Rica on the 30th of May, as well as available online for people who wanna participate in that, in, that, uh, in that way. And so nine of our delegates are gonna be elected at the three regional conventions and three at the global. Um, the allocation of our 13 delegates to the different regions um, will, will be done and will be announced um, in the coming days. Um, that's another calculation that we have to do based on these results that we have. And um, we are also going uh, to elect an alternate for each presidential candidate, in this case, the one candidate. Um, will also be elected at our convention and we'll also select our chair. So that is, in brief, our delegation to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Next slide. So we're, we have completed our global presidential primary. The next steps to the in the nominating process will be that we're going to open the applications online for people who want to run to be a delegate on the 26th of March. Yeah, so we're going to open up the, the application form for delegates on the 26th of March, and that will be open through the 19th of April. And then here we've got the dates also for our conventions, May 25th for the Asia Pacific region, May 26th for Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and then the 30th of May in Costa Rica for the Americas region. And then finally, our global convention on the 31st of May. So those are the next steps in terms of electing the people who will fill those three delegate spots. So that is uh, that is the presentation for today. And if there are any questions, I'm very happy to take those. Um, if you would like to ask a question, please just raise your hand and we will answer your questions. If anyone would, if does anyone have a question? No, everything's clear. Okay, perfect. So oh. these results are going to be posted on the on the website, so you can look at those. I'll also mention that we're going to we're going to also publish, um, you know, in the coming days, the more detailed breakdown of the results um, in the different regions, and so that information will also be forthcoming and will be shared on the website. There's a question. A hand up. Uh, we have a hand up from uh, Carl Taylor. He is the chair of the Germany Frankfurt chapter. Yeah, uh, you just answer my question. I just want to know we're going to get the further breakdown by your regions, and uh, yes. just would like to know, you know, how we did, like per se, in Germany in total. Um, so you'll have that breakdown. Yes, I, I, I yes, the global tally committee. Um, has been busy uh, the last few days uh, in completing all of the, these global results. And that you know will include all of the breakdowns. I know folks are really interested to hear how many votes there were in their country or their chapter, um, how many votes we had in different regions. It's also really interesting to look at, see how many people came into voting centers versus voted remotely. The remote voting, of course, is something really, um, really great for our members who live in remote locations. And really, I think also a, a best practice for the Democratic Party in terms of enabling participation for people who live in remote areas. So those numbers will be coming out. And just a, you know, a big shout out here to the folks who uh, dedicated themselves over the last week to going through all of the results that were sent in from the country committees and chapters, the voting centers around the world. Um, the global tally team. So that's uh, you know Sherry Temple, Steve Nardi was on the on the voting team. They're both here today. Alan Shalik, Inga uh, uh, Inga Kemp Truck, um, as well as uh, as well as uh, Gail Fagan, uh, were all part of that team and went through in detail to reconcile all the results and to produce the tabulations. So. Um, really great job. And Julia Bryan was also part of the, that global team. So they worked really hard. And that, of course, needs to be produced in a nice format that we can share with everybody. So you can drill down into your results. Um, our next question is from Steve Nardi, our international vice chair. Steve? 
Thank you, Angela. Uh, Martha, thank you so much. The, this inf the, the press conference has been, has been wonderful, the information, and we will get more details out to the country committees. I would just like to take a moment to also recognize the Caribbean Islands Transnational Country Committee for holding their first GPP, and Guyana, who's our first country committee in formation, who actually went through and held their GPP as well. So I'd just like to uh, throw props out to them. Thank you. Great, Steve. Thanks for those distinctions. Yeah, we had three yeah, country committees, but we also have, you know, one of them is in formation and we also have our transnational committee. So thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Okay. Are there any more questions from anyone? The next question is from Liz. Go for it, Liz. I was just hoping, seeing all of these faces who did so much work, if we could get a screenshot or two uh, in celebration and in thanks. I think that would go really well in our social media, driving volunteers and making people feel appreciated. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Liz. Um, we have a question from Marianne. Do you want to ask your question, Marianne? Um, we'll go to Amy. Hi, so I just put my question in the chat. We know how many people voted in the GPP. Do we know how many of our members may have voted in their state primary? Uh, thanks, Amy. That's a that's a really good question. We haven't we haven't surveyed our members to ask how many of them voted in their state primary. But of course, in Democrats abroad, we all vote back in the states where we last lived, and you know we're in the situation where we we may vote back in our states for president. But we really encourage in Democrats abroad um, voters to vote with us in our presidential primary and leave that spot blank on their primary ballot back in their state. Um, so we haven't asked that question yet, um, but that might be something that we want to that we want to know from folks: how many people did vote back in their state primaries? We, we we certainly know that a lot of people, you know, turned out this year um, to vote with us. Yeah, I think knowing that would help us message better around the reasons to vote in the GPP. I mean, if we have three times more voters in the GPP than people that voted in their state, we can probably pat ourselves on the back. If 10 times more people voted in their states than voted yeah. in the GPP. That could be a path for how to change things next time. Yeah, yeah, that's good. There's um, there's a number of questions that we have for our members about voting. For example, you know, when people are voting back in their state primaries for Senate or Congress or whatever they're voting for, we really want to know what their voting experience is this year because we know that voters are facing um, some challenges voting abroad and that their um, their votes are not always counted or they have you know difficulties voting. We want to be sure that we address those early on in the cycle. Um, so these are questions that we could ask for our members, and that's a that's a good one to add to the list. Uh, we have a the question from Marianne. She'd like me to read it. Um, what's the difference between the number of people that voted this year compared to 2020? Um, okay, well, I don't, um, I'd have to look up the exact number for 2020. But of course, we had fewer voters voting this year, we had our greatest turnout ever in 2020, we had a lot of candidates on the ballot. It was a high point in turnout. And of course, this year, we had um, an incumbent president, um, and we had one other one other candidate. Um, and turnout was uh, turnout was lower this year because of the fact that we didn't have as many candidates on our ballot. Um, would have to look that one up um, for 2020. It was lower turnout than uh, than in the last cycle, but again, it was triple the turnout that we had in 2012 when we had an incumbent president. Okay, uh, are there any more questions from anyone? before we bring this to a close. All right, well then, uh, Martha, do you have any final words for us? Well, I just wanna thank everybody for joining today. I know a lot of you here were involved in organizing the global presidential primary. So a huge shout out and a thank you to you. It was really just such a special experience to be there for me personally, and I'm sure for many of you as well. So, and thank you today for, for coming out and thank you for everything that you're gonna do from now up until the 5th of November um, to win elections. Very grateful for all of you. And thank you, Angela, for hosting us today. Yes. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you uh, in November. So let's all keep working to get out the vote. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for coming.